Uh, okay, we can go on to the next uh, lecture. Uh, that's uh, Ilya. Uh, once again, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, my topic is uh, developing diagnostic relation criteria. This is absolutely necessary for any investment in longevity therapies. Um, uh, okay, we know that uh, if we really want to uh, postpone age-related diseases, uh, the main premise of anti-aging and of geroscience of longevity and uh, of the longevity field that if we uh, intervene into aging process, we can postpone the multiple aging-related diseases or multiple morbidity, and in this way extend the healthy lifespan. But uh, what does it actually mean? Uh, what do we actually measure as, as a risk, as a risk from aging? Um, how do we calculate this? It is a question. Uh, and of course, we also know that um, uh, there will be massive savings from, uh, from such an approach, from intervention to aging to prevent uh, multiple disease. But once again, it's an open question, how do we uh, calculate, uh, uh, the first of all, the effect on, on the actual um, uh, health span, and then uh, from this, uh, the effects on the economy. It's very unclear. And uh, we also know that uh, there are multiple uh, proofs of principle uh, that it is indeed possible uh, to intervene into aging, to postpone age-related disease, to extend healthy lifespan from animal models, uh, as well as from some emerging human trials. Uh, there is a multitude of, of uh, approaches, of classifications, of, uh, of um, aging processes that are targeted. Once again, uh, what do we mean by, uh, by biomarks of aging? What do we select? Because obviously everything changes with age. Uh, do we use uh, these uh, seven processes uh, or do we measure some other seven processes of 77 processes? Uh, do we use uh, this uh, proprietary algorithm or another? It's uh, very open, uh, so everybody here is, is for themselves for now. Uh, there is even a question. Um, uh, of course, there are imagined biomarkers, a uh, multitude of them. Uh, once again, uh, everything changes with age, so uh, everything can be biomarker. There is no consensus um, and uh, no clear vision. Uh, uh, what is it that we're actually looking for? No consensus, no agreement even about the most basic definitions. How do we measure aging? Do we, how do we see aging? Is it a disease? Is it a syndrome, polysyndrome, risk factor, underlying cause, frailty predictor? Uh, do we measure biological age? Uh, do we measure multimorbidity? Do we measure index? Uh, uh, what, what do we want to measure? Um, uh, so far, there is no agreement, uh, but uh, there are some um, operational approaches, some instrumental approaches that uh, allow us to function in real life. Probably the most practical is uh, the approach by Arnir Barzilai, uh, who is here, uh, uh, the target aging with metformin. So if we don't know how to measure aging, at least we can um, uh, uh, diagnose uh, multiple diseases, combine them, and this way measure the effects. Uh, this is probably the most uh, practical, feasible approach right now that was accepted by the FDA. And uh, there are already some ramifications, some um, additional applications of this approach. Uh, for example, here in Israel, uh, uh, we introduced this approach into the uh, call for research proposals on aging called the Britain-Israel Research and Academic Exchange Partnership on Aging, Barracks Aging, that explicitly speaks approaches uh, toward early diagnosis and prediction of old age multimorbidity um, uh, as, uh, and aging as determinant of multimorbidity. Uh, over 200 labs uh, 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 submitted proposals. Uh, so it's very far from common practice, uh, very far from, from good practice, but at least more and more people are exposed to this, uh, uh, to this approach of, uh, of uh, measuring multiple disease, measuring the aging process. Uh, it is also very important to introduce this topic into policy. That's my focus. I'm you know, half scientist or half part scientist, uh, half part, uh, uh, half time, um, after I'm activist, um, uh, for example, in the uh, position paper uh, we wrote in the International Society on Aging and Disease for the critical need to promote research of aging, uh, one of the central topics is developing criteria for efficacy and safety of geroprotective therapies. Uh, it was translated to 12 languages, uh, you know, submitted to several governments, uh, quoted uh, 150 times in academic literature. Uh, so if uh, we may not agree yet on uh, concrete biomarkers that uh, we want to, uh, to want to use, at least we can agree on policies, uh, introduce this as a policy uh, that, uh, that governments, that authorities should, uh, should pursue. 
um, also in the international frameworks uh, we need to push for this kind of um, uh, for this kind of strategic vision to develop um, uh, aging biomarkers or multi-morbidity biomarkers um, uh, so some of the um, uh, examples where our advocacy was actually um, uh, some somewhat influential first of all the the famous uh, case uh, with icd11 where uh, thanks to the work of Daria Halturin and her colleagues uh, they were, they included um, aging as a uh, as a qualifier as an extension code aging related into the icd into the international classification of disease but once again uh, aging was in the icd even before as a senility old age but there were no agreed biomarkers so it was considered a junk uh, junk code uh, so uh, before we agree on some uh, on some uh, uh, acceptable biomarkers there's no way we can apply this uh, this criteria and also um, in the campaign we did in 2017 uh, uh, to introduce aging into the uh, into the work program of the who uh, we were successful aging was included uh, with some um, uh, some um, hints at, at, at measurements, uh, for example, they say that they should measure also life expectancy as a, as the uh, main uh, measure of the effectiveness of healthcare system. Uh, they say that uh, we should uh, reduce uh, the number of um, of uh, care dependent elderly by 15 million. But what does it mean? Nobody knows. Uh, uh, where are those 15 millions in in Western countries, Eastern countries? How do we measure age the care dependency? Generally, we need to know that WHO is not so great on, on, on um, evaluation. Uh, for example, if you look at the um, uh, global burden of disease, uh, the way they establish uh, risk factors for death, uh, it turns out that we all have uh, many hundreds of percent um, uh, chances of dying, when in reality, we still have only 100%. Uh, so we really need some, uh, some good uh, methodologies to evaluate risks, uh, to evaluate biomarkers. At, at least we need to include this search um, here in Israel, we also push to include it into policy, once again, not as a concrete biomarker or set of biomarkers, uh, but as a strategic, uh, strategic par part, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, in 2018, we were able together with, uh, with uh, my comrades, uh, Alex Friedman from uh, Disabled Not Half a Person, we were able to introduce this topic as part of the Israel National Master Plan on Aging. First of all, we were able to uh, introduce this very topic of uh, uh, education, uh, research and development uh, for health and longevity and preventing age-related diseases, the National Blaster Plan on Aging. And within it, uh, within it uh, one of the topics was uh, to establish uh, 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 a structure um, for preventive measures for aging-related diseases. But this basically means developing and implementing uh, biomarkers, appropriate biomarkers on aging. It still sits very nicely on paper. Uh, it didn't advance far, uh, but uh, especially now um, uh, with the with the current situation, uh, also political situation in Israel. But we're hopeful that uh, it will develop and uh, and become a uh, project and shall working group. Uh, our research, uh, in particular, uh, our research together with my colleague Dr. David Bloch, we also tried to work on on this topic. Uh, you know, uh, by our own means. Uh, we use uh, uh, information theoretical measures such as uh, normalized mutual formation, and it allows some new approaches to measure multimorbidity and uh, and aging. Uh, for example, it allows uh, the establishment of nonlinear relation between parameters and also the establishment of uh, cumulative or synergistic relation between parameters. Josh also noted uh, many um, uh, many uh, process in aging uh, are, are not uh, reducible to linear uh, linear relations, uh, also not to uh, to single cause effect, but also also synergistic. This approach allows um, it, uh, allows to to measure such uh, uh, such relations. Uh, we published uh, some papers and in good journals like Progress Neurobiology even introduced this topic um, in as a commitment in the European Partnership on Active and Healthy Aging. But once again, it's only our project that not many people heard about. There are thousands of other projects running in parallel uh, about biomarkers that probably never heard about each other. We need some kind of dialogue. Uh, we need to, to come to some uh, common denominator, uh, probably uh, not about specific uh, biomarkers, but at least about uh, about um, uh, uh, some things that we are looking for in a biomarker. Is it clarity of definition? Um, is it a diminishment of uh, confounding factors? Is it informative value? Is it practical utility? Is it cost effectiveness, affordability? Uh, several criteria that can be explored. 
um, uh, and, and to drive our, our search for, for acceptable biomarkers. And of course, it is important that um, uh, the, the established set of biomarkers is used in regulation to actually approve therapies. Otherwise, it will uh, once again remain on paper, but also that it should not um, uh, stifle the emergence of new, uh, new uh, biomarkers, because obviously there will be new uh, and, and more, uh, more effective biomarkers uh, probably every, every week or every month. And we should develop our evaluation criteria in such a way that will not uh, uh, stop the, the new developments, but only encourage them, encourage competition. Once again, competition is great. Uh, multiple approaches are great, but we also need some kind of uh, a common language uh, to discuss. Uh, of course, in physics, you know what uh, different concepts mean, uh, what force means, and how we measure it, and how we do tests with it. In aging, we are very far from it. And uh, hopefully, in, uh, in a few years or decades, uh, we'll get uh, to for our conception. Uh, what we can do now is, is really to encourage consultation uh, on the subject, to, to encourage uh, opinions, uh, exchange of opinions, uh, some sort of consensus forming. Uh, we could really strive to sort of, uh, you know, uh, guidelines. Uh, uh, for example, uh, together with Alexei Moskalev, um, uh, we are now um, uh, editing a special issue in frontier genetics exactly on this issue clinical evaluation criteria for aging so uh, we encourage everybody to submit uh, uh, their opinion articles or, or reviews or uh, or uh, some um, uh, concrete uh, experimental studies we really need to, to increase uh, public discussion of this issue otherwise we really know uh, we really have no meaning to to, to anti-aging uh, treatments not it's something that you cannot diagnose very major uh, uh, bottleneck in, in longevity in longevity research. Um, uh, ideally, there should be some uh, authoritative working group uh, with some uh, authoritative uh, uh, governmental or super governmental agency that will sit down and uh, and discuss and bring different opinions, do meta analysis and uh, come up with some guidelines uh, like they do, do with the ICH, but it costs money and uh, you know people uh, have the jobs and not everybody would be um, av available for such working group. These are some of the uh, agencies that at least I know when uh, uh, this uh, to uh, topic was broached, uh, you know, at least there were some attempts to, to establish some sort of working group, uh, nothing succeeded, um, all these attempts failed. Uh, but hopefully, perhaps, uh, thanks to this um, uh, conference and, and uh, similar approaches, there will be a more ongoing, sustained effort uh, uh, to come to the common ground to, to develop some uh, common guidelines um, for biomarkers development and application. Uh, with that, I thank you for this opportunity. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much, for your interesting talk.